All right, gang, and here we are. Welcome back to The Soapbox with Austin Maliolo. Um, wanted to dive in a little bit and chat about some requests that we've been getting. And it was funny, um, getting some good feedback on our previous uh, podcast. So thank you for um, for giving us some feedback, but also what you guys like, what you don't like. Um, that the answer to the question I always got, got got a good amount of uh, you know expressions from a lot of people. So you know, keep that stuff coming. Um, all right, today what are we gonna talk about? Uh, one of the very first posts I put up on the soapbox, someone asked they wanted to talk about PEDs, they wanted to talk about coffee, um, they wanted to talk about. Uh, training volume. We also had someone that wanted to talk about how do you deal with an athlete that you know, cheats in your classes. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of topics here, and it's a fun. It's, let's let's chat about it. Um, let's, let's let's dive in a little bit. All right. So let me hit you with my my thoughts on performance enhancing drugs within the world of CrossFit and sport in general. Okay. The definition of cheating is knowingly breaking the rules to gain an advantage. Okay, so in order to satisfy that definition, all facets of that definition need to be fit. And you can get into a really cool philosophical debate in certain sports where do you feel that if you're taking performance enhancing drugs, does it actually put you on a level playing field? So therefore, are you actually gaining an advantage or uh, you know leveling up? And that's not the conversation for this right here. But within the world of CrossFit, I remember when it, I started doing it, and it was so small that and people were like, "Oh, do you think people are doing you know drugs?" And, and in the beginning, it was like, "Well, no, absolutely not," because you know it it wasn't a sport that warranted that, right? That sort of you know it was such a small little thing. You know, we show up to the CrossFit Games in 2010, they give you a cinch bag, a pair of shoes, and a water bottle, and, and, a, and a cut-off shirt, you know? Um, and you, I think you won like 20 grand, which is cool, but, you know, I don't know if that end state of 20 grand is going to, you know, lead people to, you know, do drugs for a year or two years mm -hmm. to prepare. Where now, you know, it's... So now you have half a million dollars potentially for the winner of the CrossFit Games, do we think that that will lead to people cheating? Of course. Um, and we've seen it, right? Obviously, we've seen people get caught, and and that's something that is not ideal. And I look at it as a, as a, a good thing. Because what that means is people are taking this sport so seriously that they're making big mistakes like in every other sport, okay? So they're making big mistakes and, 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 not, and, and they're trying, they're knowingly breaking the rules to gain an advantage. They're cheating. They're breaking the rules. We know it's a rule to gain an advantage, absolutely, because the majority of the field does not do steroids. And I think that I see this a lot, specifically from, from you know, individuals from other countries. I get asked this question a lot. It's like, oh, well, everyone must be taking steroids. Or look at those people. Um, they must be taking steroids. And, and you know, I, I, it shame on everyone that thinks that oh, hard work and, and unbelievable results le is led from cheating. You know, like it's not the case. And even people that take steroids, I mean, they're still working their ass off. They're just their results are maybe a little faster. Their recovery is a little higher. Um, but you know the you know. You just don't take steroids, sit there on the couch and, and watch TV and get fitter, faster, stronger. You know, like, so remember that too. Now, when you cheat, you know, you absolutely forfeit your ability to say, I'm the hardest worker in the room because we don't actually know that, but you're probably working hard. I don't think anyone's going to debate that. Um, but it's a, it's a good thing. Drugs will always beat, beat out the testing. Um, that's called life, you know. Um, there's always there, there's the law, and there are criminals, you know. And, and some criminals get caught, some don't. And more laws are made, the more you know advanced crimes happen, right? The, the, that's and, and the better law enforcement gets. No different in the world of uh, of performance enhancing drugs. So I look at it as, hey, 
you know what? I, I've been doing this for a long time. I know some of the fittest people in the world. They're my best friends. And no, you know, they don't cheat. They just work their ass off. They're better than you. It's like, the, here, stop blaming everyone else's success on something negative. I hear this a lot from people. It's like, oh, they must be on steroids. Oh, what, because they're bigger than you or better than you or faster than you, fitter than you? Um, nope. That's not the way it rolls. It's some people are literally just better than you. They're genetically better than you. And I think that is something a lot of people forget in this day and age where everyone is, you know, oh, well, that offends me or everyone's equal. No, they're not. Okay. Because when I work out next to Rich Roney Jr., we could work we could be as hard of workers on the same level playing field. He's just a better athlete than me. He's stronger, he's fitter, he's faster, he's just better. Everyone knew those kids growing up, the kids that could throw a football 50 yards, do a backflip and play any sport and walk on and make the team. That's the way life rolls. No different there are people smarter than you. There are innate skills that people are, are have an ability to do better than you. So. Remembering that is super important. Don't, it's not an offensive thing. It just is what it is. And I think that can calm down the sort of performance enhancing drug debates. Like, of course, people are going to do it. They'll probably get caught. Remember this as well. It's one of my favorite quotes from someone that does, handles a lot of drug testing. They say, you know, no one ever gets caught on a drug test with, you know, massive amounts of whatever substance in their system. Because everyone's like, well, it was small amounts. It was trace amounts. That's always how it is, is because... Very rarely are people that stupid to take drugs right before a test. It's to the point where there are trace amounts because of the time that they've cycled off it, so on and so forth. It's just very funny. It's when you hear that, it's like, gosh, it makes sense. Like that everyone that is getting caught has small amounts because they've tried to beat the system and subsequently failed. Um, of course, there can be you know false positives, but false negatives, all these things. But you know, statistically speaking, that's uh, that's that's still that's just a tough one. Um, but I think that the best thing to understand is not not many people run around with a bunch of that stuff in their system when they get tested. Um, specifically, if it's right before an event, if it's random, that's a little different. I don't know the stats on it, but um, right before an event, you know. It's uh, very rarely rolling up in there like you just, you know, put some drugs in your system the night before. So that's my that's my piece on performance enhancing drugs. When someone uh, accuses me of being on steroids, which is rare, I just take it as a compliment. I'm like, man, I really appreciate that. Either you're telling me that I'm, I look strong, I look big or something, and that's a massive compliment to me. It doesn't happen that often, though, unfortunately, because I, I look like a, a puny little child. But um, it's... Uh, it's one of those things where I'm like, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, but very rarely does it happen because I'm not that strong. <laughs> um, but there's that. Performance enhancing drugs. Worry about yourself. Don't worry about others. That's what I got for you there. If, if, you're, if you think other people's successes are because they're cheating, you're usually at fault. I always, I always say like, it's a loser mentality to blame others successes or your failures on something that is wrong or bad or, or something like that. So grow up, move on, work harder. That's it. And if you get beat, and you've trained as hard as you can, and you've worked as hard as you can, or whatever it might be, well, that's okay, people are going to beat you. But as long as you've given all you have that all that's all that matters. So that's my spiel on performance enhancing drugs within the world of CrossFit. Okay. All right. Um, the coffee notion fits into performance enhancing drugs, other than the fact that you can pop on a test uh, if you if you take an unbelievable amount of caffeine. You probably need a couple caffeine pills and and some serious amounts of caffeinated beverages to pop on that. Um, but here's my spiel on on coffee. I love it. I drink it. I also go off of it for. 24, 36 to 48 hours sometimes to prove that um, it's a love of taste and flavor, not a love of the caffeine for it. Um, it is as placebo for me as it is anything else where there are dams where like, oh man, I need a coffee in the afternoon, but if I just drink a bunch of water or eat another meal, I'm fine. Um, 
I have I, I didn't drink coffee at all for the first five years of doing CrossFit, a little history about me, because I had adrenal fatigue. Um, essentially, that is overtraining. I overreached and I overtrained and I had full-time adrenal fatigue. Um, I knew this because I got some blood work done and then I had all the symptoms of it and I actually f started. And this is where my whole recovery regimen came into play because I had to recover. I was training and um, it was awful. It was awful. And, 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 I, and this is why I talk a lot about volume and over volumization and things like that because once you hit the state of overtraining adrenal fatigue it's it takes so long took me a year to recover but in turn i stopped drinking all caffeine all caffeinated beverages because of what it did to my adrenals and this cortisol levels and stress and things like that so um, i didn't have anything and no caffeine and then i started to um when you know and then i fully recovered obviously and and, and all that stuff and then I know I I don't know why I to be honest with you why I started drinking coffee again but I did and um, now I've fallen in love with it I you know I love you know I have a, I have my grinder my pour over my French press blah 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 um, so all that stuff um, I'm a huge fan of light roast some Ethiopian roast things like that um, I know I use um, the main a lot of the coffee I drink now is the Shelburne Falls Coffee Roasters one of a someone I worked with at the gym. Her family owns this coffee shop. It's a local to Western Mass, and I love them. Um, you know, they roast, they're all that stuff, and they have single origin and blends, but um, huge fan of, you know, supporting local business and good quality coffee. But there's a lot of good quality coffee out there. But um, I definitely recommend not, you know, fast from coffee for a, a while um, because it can be helpful. You never want to be at least not only physically, but psychologically and emotionally tied to something. So that's my challenge for you, uh, caffeine addicts out there, and, and just get tougher, get harder. Come on, you know, like don't be so weak to think that you need something. Come on, and if you find out you do, then get stronger by getting off of it. Um, but I do question if you don't drink coffee because it tastes so good. It is like an acquired taste. I don't know how many people like had a Heineken and was like, "Wow, this tastes amazing." It's like beer, right? It's like um, but then, you know, over time you develop a taste, um, you know, and, and coffee's no different. So, you know, but that's my little spiel on coffee. I won't bore you there because I'm by no means my barista um, I, or, you know, a coffee aficionado. I just really enjoy coffee and I like making it my way. Pour over, burr grinder, gooseneck kettle. That's what I got. Um, all right. <clears throat> the question, how do you deal with cheaters in the gym this was great i love how random this uh, soapbox is but we're, we're we're touching base and if you guys hate this type of uh episode let me know um but i'm having some fun with it because we're bouncing around and keeping it fresh um don't allow the noise to impact your life i used to allow this stuff oh how do i deal with cheaters how do you with this is that who gives a shit okay very rarely do the cheaters in your gym have create a problem other than you making it a problem. Here's a checklist. Confirm that they are actually knowingly cheating, right? What I mean by that is, you know, can they, make sure they can count, make sure that they don't struggle, things like that, right? Maybe help them out a little bit. Count their reps, blah, 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 blah. And, what I'm, and, 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 and here's a simple way. If we notice it's happening, go up to them a little bit. It's like, nice job. You got five reps left. Three reps left. Nice job. Let's move on to the next movement. Blah blah blah. You can do things like that, and you'll get and get a gauge of if it's super, you know, pointed. If you know, or if it's they're just lazy, making mistakes, not counting much, whatever. Um, are people in your gym complaining about it? Very rarely they complain. They're just like, hey, like you know, Bob over there, oh, he's cheating, and then it takes care of itself because everyone knows that you know Bob is the cheater. So when Bob puts a score up on the board, no one cares. And very rarely does Bob go around and, 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 and boast and brag about their score and scores. And even if he does, he's kind of making a fool of himself because the whole community knows. And and if it's if it's something that's serious, which I don't know what, when it would ever be serious, but the open or internal competition will count their reps, obviously, you know, things like that. So then it's not that big of a deal. Or when it comes to that time, obviously they're going to struggle if they've been, you know, cheating in some way, shape, or form. But 
don't stress out about it. Gosh, as gym owners, coaches, affiliate owners, you don't have time for that crap. Keep this stuff super simple. Let the community take care of it. They'll weed that person out. We've had people at our gym do that. And honestly, we didn't really address it. We just like, we never denied it when people like, oh, like, you know, Bob over there is cheating. Like, yeah. And so word gets around. And then if that person knows their ass from their elbow appropriately, they'll clean up their act because they don't want to be known for that. That's not what you want. Usually the community does an unbelievable job at taking care of their own. It very rarely are there assholes that walk into a gym. What I mean by that is truly mean people. So if 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 you're finding that that's a little different, pull them aside, talk about how they you know of how that's behavior is not acceptable. If they're being mean or rude and and, and cheating or, or or the shaving reps, whatever it is, is it sort of an impetus to that type of behavior or that communication? That's a little different, and I don't think that happens too often. But just relax. Who cares? Okay. Who cares? <laughs> you know, I, I saw this question on a a message board that I just breezed over, um, and it made me think. And it was it was like, how do you I develop rapport with my athletes at the gym? And I thought to myself, damn, if you own a gym and you're asking this question, that's not good. It's a simple thing. Be around your people. Check in with your people. Know your people. Know your community. Love your people. It's it's that simple. Um, you don't need to do anything special. Um, I think you need to to get you know check your ego. It's not about you. It's not what do I have to do. It's what can I do for my people it's not it's you're delivering a service to them just be there for them it's not a job to develop reports not a job to do this stuff it's 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 you it's a relationship and the more that we have that 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 interaction with our people the less issues you will have be yourself be honest be straightforward and accept when you need to be better, accept criticism, bounce things off one another. But gosh, just understand the overall goal. And we care about you. We want to help you. And in turn, if you're here, we're going to respect you. And you're going to respect us. But with respect comes challenges. And and, and, and so understanding that too is super helpful. Um, you want to develop rapport with your athletes, know what you don't know master the fundamentals and limit your scope and i've said this before and allow there to be a dialogue with you and your members to get to give that feedback to receive the feedback and this will help if members are cheating in your gym it's not going to be a big deal you're like all right cool whatever members are going to take care of themselves that they're, they're going to they'll they're it's not going to affect my community um how do i do it the athlete that doesn't want to scale i you know i hear that question a lot if you have a good understanding and all this comes back to education guys too um I, that's going to be my next episode how do i deal with the athlete that doesn't want to scale and the reason why i want that to be my next episode is because it's a big one but it all comes down to education awareness rapport but it all what it all comes back to is you care about your people so you're asking yourself this question which is great but then from there remember we talked about caring is a great thing but you need to also be damn good at your job if you're if if your athletes don't want to scale and push back in your class, you're not that good at your job. I'm gonna leave it there, and that's gonna be our ne next episode on the soapbox. Right? Thank you very much. We will see you on the other side.